music up, music in the air. I hear music in the air. Right. And we'll make it somehow. Oh, the yeah. Lord will take us through. And as I was least listening to you read that, it brought back memories. But I look at how far he's brought me and how strong he has made me through those trials and tribulation times. So I really am impressed and enjoyed what I heard. And I will read the rest from beginning to the end. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and let me know your feedback, too. I, I've, uh, uh, you can actually go to the website and leave your, your comments to okay. Emoja Village. Um, you, you can purchase a book there, too, for those of you who... Uh, but if you would, please, I, I'm, I'm hoping to go um, to Kindle and uh, Amazon. Okay. But I just discovered that you can have a Kindle on your own website. You don't have to use Amazon's website. So I'm trying to finagle how to get all that done. <laughs> Uh, you can autograph me one, bro. <laughs> okay, all right. So I think they don't have any more stage. Uh, yeah, because they, they're, they're sending receipts and everything. So yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, how, how do you want to autograph? Uh, thank you to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah. I'm fine. Trying to keep up. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hi, BCC. Work with me at BCC. She's with BCCC. All right. Yeah. This beautiful man married me and my wife. Wonderful. And uh, Sister Arlene, you would be interested in this. His daughter used to be the head of our housing corporation. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, she was the our nonprofit housing. Yes, Sister Benbo used to serve yeah. on the board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay. And Nikki and Johnson doing great with their business. They wanted to oh, be is that right? Good. Yeah. Oh, oh man. So hard, man. So, yes, uh, they have an IT company. I hope you like it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm take a picture with my brother, of course. I'm not yeah. ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. How are you? Hi, this is my wife, Tanya. Yes. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Yes. 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 Write a resolution. I, I I confess I was surprised the mayor wrote a resolution on my behalf because when I was active we weren't on the same side of the fence. Uh, when I was active in politics here in the city council, uh, but uh, she was gracious enough to send one along too. Um, I, I'll let you see it. Yeah. It. Uh, so it's kind of a welcome home because it's the first since I got back from Jamaica. It's the first. Uh, you know, political anything that I've <laughs> touched or seen. <laughs> I have a question, Doctor. Yeah. Um, is, is there any plan of doing any readings at local high schools or college universities of this book? I, I feel like it has a strong message that the younger generation needs to hear. I'm so I, I, I would love to. In fact, I'm trying to get the book into the academic. I mean, that's really what it was written for. The church, and, you know, but uh, I tell you the truth, I'm having for some strange reason uh, not many invitations to come to church. Uh, I'm doing a lot of conferences, uh, the Baltimore Washington conference. I'll be doing having a book signing there, but I'd love to do just that. Uh, uh, you know, in, in fact, much of the messages, many of the messages, plus the African American creed that I wrote, which is included in the book are invaluable for our young people to hear and to learn. Um, it, it's a ritual much like the Kwanzaa celebration, which is, which is what we celebrate as African Americans from December 26th until uh, January 1st. It, it's one of our, our cultural 
And um, when I started in ministry in 1982, I opened our hymnal, and there was a, a creed, you know, like the Disciples' Creed, the Apostles' Creed. There was a creed for everybody in the hymnal but us. There was a Korean creed. I'm going to hold Native American creed. I'm going to, I'm going to video uh, it. Okay. There was a Disciples' Creed. There was even a Canadian creed. But they had no African American creed. So I wrote one back in, actually, 1982. I, well, can you hold I wrote it? Can you hold it? But I could never get it published. Here we go. Nobody would ever. Give me five, uh, five because they said it was too, too African, too, too African American, okay, too black. Uh, whatever. No, um, in Baltimore City, they said that. And to the. The Presbyterians, the AMEs, the United Methodists, those denominational books that I was trying to get it published in, so that people could use it in worship. Um, like the other creeds, you know, it's, it's in the hymnal, in the, in the worship books. But they kept saying, oh no, it's a little, a little too strong and something. And so, as a result, I never had, had it published. And to my knowledge, there's not one published. There's not an African-American creed. So I've written one and included it in the book. Uh, uh, by circumstance, because I couldn't, I couldn't get it published in place else. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's, that's part of the story behind the book, too. Um, and it, you notice the building. That, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the building we built when I was serving there at Unity. Um, 74 units of low-income apartments. The first time a, 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 a nonprofit church built low-income. Many churches had built senior apartments. Uh, they were getting funded, they were funding the law for that, but we were the first to get for low-income. And I might add, when we went to the state, I mean, Maryland Department of Housing, we fought with them for over a year to get the funding, and they said to us, you're the first to get it for low income funding. Mm. And you're the last. Mm. Wow. And that was completed in 2004, and there's been no other low income housing funded in Baltimore City mm. since then. They made sure, so to speak, that we didn't. No one else got another project through. And I, I tell you, that, uh, this may interest you too, it was a Title 20 fund program. That's what we used to fund. The building cost $11.2 million to build. But it was only valued at like one point something, eight million dollars at, at turnkey when the construction company gave the key to the owner. It was 1.8. So the difference between 1.8 and 11.2, we used the federal tax credit program to fund that gap. And that's what they were so adamant about. They, 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 they never used it for, for low income in the city. They, again, uh, the church on Pennsylvania Avenue, Pennsylvania Avenue, Amy Zion, they built a senior tower using the same fund. But nobody had done the income. Uh, so we're proud of it. In fact, uh, just another anecdote. When we got into the heat of discussion with the state about it, we went to the Treasury Department where the man who wrote the federal tax program was still employed. We had lunch with him and got him to write a memorandum explaining that when he developed the program, it was designed to help fund low-income projects in urban areas, but that the states, having gotten the money, had dispersed it so that it was primarily being used for seniors and other housing in rural areas, as opposed to the intent of the program. So with that, armed with that, we went back to the state and met with them all the way up to the head of the uh, housing department of the state of Maryland, and they finally agreed. But again, the caveat was, you're the first to get it, and you're the last. And so far, that's held true. Uh, sad to say. Sad to say. But, uh, yeah, that was part of the exciting part of the ministry. How you want me to? However you. Okay. Your, your spirit tells you to write it. It's for Tell or ICQ Leo. Say it again. R I C Q U E L. R I C Q U E L. U E L. U E L.
top of the uh, arm. Which one? On, on. Uh, no, no. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel. Are you coming back to Baltimore to ministry, or are you just... No, not, not in ministry. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm firmly retired from, from pastoring. And ministry. I mean, every now and then somebody will drag me out of the mall phone, ask me to come to a wedding or yeah. a funeral. And occasionally, uh, Reverend King over at Met at, he's the pastor yeah. now in Metropolitan. Uh, over at, East. No, the one on the, on the Lafayette Square. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's the new, new pastor there. Uh, and thank you, he's the young I was telling you about. Uh, uh, the book was so open to Reverend Eric King. Yeah, Eric King. He grew up on, uh, what's it, Schroeder? No, no, Calhoun Street. He grew up on Calhoun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What corner is he on? At Carrollton and Landale. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know, I mean, if, wherever you're fellowshipping, I'd love to come yeah, and yeah. preach and do a book signing, you know, wherever church you are with fellowshipping. That, that's true, too. If you have a, a church and you have a, a special event where, you know, I can come and preach and uh, be a ministry to you and to a special occasion and maybe bring my book. <laughs> but, uh, that, you know, that's a win win. Right. Could I ask, how do you advertise that you're coming? Because had it not been for Darrell, I wouldn't have known that you were here. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I, I, I've been doing the, the Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, uh, Google, Google. 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 Did, yeah, they they, they they automatically reminded folks yesterday about it. Yes. I was pleasantly surprised. And and uh, uh, he's not here, but the gentleman who translated my book from my typing to the type of print where they, you know, print ready, uh, Robert Charles Louder, uh, he sent, he sent them flyer out to about, I think he said over 300 stations, but, you know, that was three weeks ago, so, <laughs> uh, but that, that's, that's, that's how I have been advertising, uh, and like I said, I hope to get on, have it on Kindle, mm -hmm. if I can, Finagle things so I can have the Kindle on my website and not on Amazon's website. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm trying to do by June. Um, and I've, I've asked, or rather have been asked, if the sermons could be recorded for audio. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so, that would be awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm Especially that last one. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Brought me to tears. Uh, well, I, I don't. More yeah. arriving. Oh, great. Keep talking, great one. Hey. Uh, <laughs> was it bringing any other questions? Um, if we wanted to bring you um, either to a school or somewhere, what's the process? Just contact me. That's oh, true. yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I had been living in Jamaica while you know, engaged in editing and putting the book together. Uh, but quite candidly, it got so bad where I was living. I mean, uh, for three years where I lived, we had nine people die. Eight of them were between like 92 and 107. And one, maybe 20, 22 year old child, I mean, young man, had a motorbike accident while he was inebriated. Uh, and then last year, there were four murders in the village where I lived. Four. So one of them was a young man who was employed by me, helping me farm. Mm -hmm. So it became like, wow, all of a sudden it was the same thing like in other areas of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I rarely would go to Kingston, because, you know, going to Kingston is rough, as they say. <laughs> it's rough. Uh, but now the area where we were, we were living had become just as bad. Uh, and same thing, crack cocaine, the gangs, uh, that's the vibe as follows. So, <coughs> long story short, yeah, I'm back here. I said, if I gotta be scared and lock the door and all that, I'm able to do it where I'm, where I'm known. <laughs> at home. Mm. As opposed to somewhere I'm not known. Yeah.
so yeah, as of December, uh, we've relocated back here. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm living. We live in D.C., but I'm, you know, I'm available. So we don't have to pay your flight from Dominica. No, no. Lodging. <laughs> 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 uh, right. <laughs> Outside of the book, are you doing anything organizing, community-related, or on any boards or anything? No, I have been serving on the board of WPFW. I was okay. on that board. Um, and to be honest, I got so stressed out. I was so I might have been in the hospital oh. a day before a board meeting. H high blood pressure. I mean, yeah. I, it just so essentially I'm saying I, I'm not likely. I turned 71 this August. All oh, this huh? So yeah. I'm not likely to get involved in, a, in but I am interested. In fact, this brother here, brother Dean Balbarris, <laughs> he's been working for the last several years trying to develop a low power FM. In, in the Baltimore area, in the, in the DMV area, but particularly in Baltimore. And Low Power FM is non-profit radio where non -commercial. no commercials, but which doesn't have the range of, say, uh, a 50,000 watt station, because Low Power FM means it's yeah. just that, 10, 10 power, yeah, 10 uh, watts of power. About 10 miles. Yeah, 10, mile 10 miles of radio. Without interference. So we've been working on that off and on for the last three years, four of. years. And uh, I'm, we, we're about to undertake to see if we can do that, uh, you know, uh, in terms of getting that up. And what, what it can do, what, what community radio can do. You know, Baltimore kind of got sold out when they got this Comcast contract. Right. Because before then, Baltimore had uh, pay channels, you know, public education and government channels. And you could go to Coppin and, and yep. you, you get training in, in, in audio and communication. They had a studio, but well, all of that got sold down the river uh, when the city of Baltimore signed this new Comcast contract. And to give you an idea, in Prince George's County, when they signed the contract with Comcast, they got six studios at Prince George's Community College. Six studios. Baltimore, when they signed the contract, they took away three studios and gave us one, the government studio run by the mayor and her council. So there's no public television, there's no public there's, access anywhere in Baltimore City. There's a Charm here. TV that's doing a lot of community oriented. Charm TV, which is the, the the government channel. Oh, that's channel 25. That's that's doing more of the community interest oh, area I'm because to hear that. Yeah, yeah, because they, yeah. they have funding. Oh, yeah. We don't. At first, it was it was strictly yeah the, only the mayor's programs. We are talking about the same channel. Channel 25, yeah. yeah. Uh, 75 is the public access, but 25 now has the Charm TV. That's the oh, local. But then they go out to restaurants, they go out to community centers, and they they, they interview. That yeah. would be similar to what public access, community right. access, would be doing because they have the funding and the equipment in the do studio. Do they have the training and the opportunity for the public to come in and do this? That's no, because that is not in the public um, public channel. Oh well, but, uh, we'll to work on that. that to answer your question, that, that's about what I'm hoping to work on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, you, well, you had an interest in the, so, in the southwest of Baltimore area. Well, not the partnership, I know that, but do you, are you um, going to get involved with anything there um, with, with the uh, neighborhoods? Not. Uh, no. Since we're located in D.C. Oh, you're located in yeah, D.C. Yeah, okay. I, it, it's, it's hard logistically to, to even plan. In fact, I was hoping to do some work over there in D.C., but it's, uh, it, it's hard to plan, especially for doing, doing the same thing here in Boston. I, I grieved when I saw what I saw on TV, but you know, my, my response to that is the same as it's always been. None of that will change what we saw a few weeks ago here in Baltimore or what we see all around this country until we get reparations. Mm -hmm. Until we get reparations. That's, that's, that's what's old, and that's what will balance the scales in terms of uh, adjusting the social issues that we see, education, housing, employment, all of that. What do you see? I mean, I just went to see the performance at Morgan a couple of weeks ago about reparations. Oh. 
And I'm just curious as to how you feel about what would that look like for you, like reparations to you look like what? Oh, it, it, Dr. King, <coughs> Dr. King laid it out in 1967. Um, Amos Wilson laid it out in <coughs> Blueprint for Black Power. Um, um, Marcus Garvey laid it out in, in, in the UNIA. Um, Elijah Muhammad laid it out. The Republic of New Africa has laid it out. They've all laid out this five-point program that included reparations, and that was guaranteed income, guaranteed housing, guaranteed employment, guaranteed health care and guaranteed education for people of African descent who were the victims of slavery. And that includes compensation. That includes package compensation. Meaning that every other ethnic group in this country, Native Americans, Jewish, uh, who were compensated for mistreatment by this government, were compensated with money. That's not something we have to say, oh, we don't want the money, we just want to... No, 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 no. We, we, for 270 years of slavery, where you got no pay, Imagine what the interest on that salary is today. Right. I say no, they owe it to us. So, mm -hmm. reparations to me looks like what Dr. King was organizing the Poor People's Campaign to do, which was to come to the United States seat of government in 1968 and stop and shut the government down until they guaranteed those five things. He wasn't looking for it for strictly African American people. He was looking for it as a remedy for the entire social structure. But the, the five-point plan of guarantee those five things, it, it's, it's, it's the remedy. In fact, if you look at, at post-World War II, all of those types of programs were made available by the government to GIs. Think about it. Housing, education, all of these things were made available as kind of repair for their having served in the war. We're not asking for anything any different. Right. One of the um, counter arguments to reparations is always affirmative action programs and government funding. That's not the same. It, it, How do you it, it, it push, really, push back on that argument? It, it's hard to because you know everybody says the same thing. We, we, we'll, 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 those who are advocating for reparations are divided into two camps. Mm -hmm. Those who say we, we need compensation, and we say, they say we need the, the structured uh, redevelopment to help us get back on our feet. And I say, true, we need that and that. Um, when I served on the city council, Councilwoman Ricky Spector was uh, announced on the floor of the city council that her and her family had just received compensation from Germany for what their family suffered during World War II. She stood up so proud to announce that reparations were still being paid to her for what happened in World War II. And that was six million. Now, but we estimate the that there were six They're not trying to be citizens of Germany, and we're still trying to be citizens in oh, America. Oh, true, right. Yeah. And that's the real issue. If you want to be a citizen, or do you want to affirm with them, or do you want reparations so you can then build your own? If you want to be a citizen, it's going to be a hard push to get reparations. It, it, it truly because is. Because the Jews are not pushing to be citizens of Germany. No. But they're trying they, to but they're build still their own compensated. nation. Yeah, they're and, compensated, and, and, and but they're building point. a nation with that compensation. They're not still saying we're citizens, True. but you're going to pay us for the wrongs that you imposed and on us. And that's all we're asking. We, we, we're, not, we're, we're saying we don't have any intent to be subjugated in how we spend what you owe us. There, there is no such thing as you can be compensated but you can't have programs, or you can have programs but you can't be compensated. I say you need both. And if you look at the history of repairing people, that's how they get repaired. Native Americans, or particularly the Japanese Americans, who were incarcerated, mm -hmm. interned during World War II, mm -hmm. they weren't just given special accommodations by the government for housing and business loans and all that kind of thing. They weren't just given that. They were given direct compensation. And we're talking about over 60 million African people of African descent who died during the Middle Passage alone. It's almost four. It's almost four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the story is strictly about this. So what's your next project as writing on what? Probably a biography. A biography. Yeah, I've developed neuropathy in my hands. So I've got to go to another method of typing. You know, uh, uh -huh. but uh, so it'll probably take even longer. But. 
Yeah, it's probably an autobiography. Yeah. Although I, I keep I keep feeling movements from the spirit of the ancestors to do some poetry as well. And the study on dance, spirituality. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, I was uh, fortunate in 2002 to be the first recipient of the Kellogg's Foundation uh, pastoral uh, sabbatical program. W.K. Kellogg's, you know, the Cornflake people. They, mm -hmm. uh, I, I got the first one and I spent, I, I, I was awarded a fellowship to study the role of dance in African and African American worship. And I have a, I've compiled a, a collection of tapes that I made.